How's everybody doing? Greetings to the Bonsai Kunst community and to the Mariah Live members. We have a really special opportunity today to kind of work in collaboration with Bonsai Kunst and their efforts in distributing quality bonsai knowledge online and, uh, and the Mariah Live crew to just go through a series of images of trees that were submitted and talk about the nuances of design, potential opportunities, and, and where we can go with these trees to maximize their quality at bonsai. And I love, I love digging deep into design. I feel like it always gives us a chance to be creative, to kind of explore possibilities, etc. So without further ado, let us begin. Now, I don't have any context for these trees. I just have images. I don't, I will try my best to assume the species, um, but I'm strictly speaking on what kind of merits and characteristics we see in the tree, how we view this tree to, to potentially maximize its quality. And we'll start with the first tree, which appears to be a Scots pine and a relatively slender, elegant Scots pine. Now, uh, looking at image number one, we see a lot of changes in direction, and I really am drawn to these irregular uh, sort of moments, right? Because we hear, we go here, we go here, we have that very sort of long, drawn out, angular, and almost, right? The difference in lengths is what gives it value just past perpendicular here. I am not at all uh, critical of this angle. I think it's quite nice, but this moment right there, that jog, that is where the magic of the design, I think, really comes from, okay? Now, when I look at the base and I try to analyze a tree, we're always looking for those big, powerful pieces of stability. And as I go through the images, I see uh, the second image relatively straight. We lose some movement through the midsection. I look at uh, the backside of the tree. Feels like we lose some movement. I, uh, or excuse me, I, I guess I'm looking at either the left or the right side in image number three. Again, that straight section. I look at the backside and we don't get near sort of the, the, the bark, the interest, etc. So I do feel like image number one, this feels very, very nice to me. And again, what would encourage an angle change? A perpendicular or a parallel line would immediately encourage us to try and adjust that perpendicular or parallel line to the rim of the container and that straight line. I see this just past, right? If we think about per just past perpendicular, everything in terms of this movement is right, is right. But again, the base, not having big, powerful roots that give visual stability, that is where this turn right here, boom, 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 okay, we get into here, and then we have another one right here. I feel like this is pushing you in a direction that you have got to compensate. You have this significant push to the right, you've got this weight out here, you have to come back to the left, I feel, to compensate for the lack of base. And this is where design is stimulated by the tree's character and the response to those character. Uh, uh, pieces of character, right? And so when we see that, I almost feel like there is a really radical design in this tree from the perspective of a long slender tree, we elongate the design, we narrow the silhouette, we shrink down the apex, we reduce the size of the pads. That is the continuation of design. And I almost wonder if we don't go here, here, come back again, and then we finish this tree off right here. Coming back, not necessarily over the base. I wanna stay back from that central line. But if we have this piece here, a nice small apex here, we drop a branch down right here, you see these pieces that we have. You see this elongated line, that's my apical region. Normally we're trying to shorten, I'm not trying to shorten this. I have great movement, I'm trying to actually use the longest pieces and elongate, and that's where I see this piece, that's where I see this piece, that's where I see this piece being such. This piece right here is a monster of a pivotal branch. And in all honesty, when I look at the lower portion, I don't want these branches over here. I don't want these branches over here. You have a tree that already has some significant gestures of age. I really wanna lean on this piece right here coming up, and I might even lean on this piece right here coming up, and then having a little bit of a presence over here maybe as a little bit of a trunk, maybe we have a return branch right here that's quite small, and then we have these pieces here, these significant pieces that are gonna be the defining pieces, the defining branch potentially, or at least a very significant uh, move there, but we're compressing on the right, we're elongating on the left, we're taking into account the objective use of the base, we're elongating the design here. This is where good, con con sort of consistent objective bonsai design comes from. I think that's your very best tree, and I think it really puts the merits of the material to good use, okay? All right, number two, we're dealing with, uh, I'm assuming this is a Sabina or a Shimpaku, immediately off the bat. 
Okay, I love the wobble here. Um, you know, there is a little bit of a sort of stagnant line coming out of the current angle. Uh, great movement. I love how this branch sort of piggybacks on this curvature here. Let's see what we have in the other positions. Okay, we have a little bit more deadwood. Notice the flare of the base here when we start to talk about this piece. Flare of the base, boom. Interesting. Okay, backside, wow. Backside. This from the front to the back. There is a very significant, let me see the, the, this other side. Okay, I can pretty much, yeah, I can pretty much say let's, we're going to steer clear of these. And here's why, let me just say why we're going to steer clear of these, okay, because this is important. Anytime I've got this, this, and my apex is, is even remotely close to that, I've got a very stagnant design compared to the other things that we have. Okay, so when I look here, great, I look here. This, this, is, this is where the merit is, though, and let's just understand why. Okay, great base here, got great dimension, but look at this. Look at this rotation that we get. Look at this rotation that we get. Anytime you get twist in design, when you're talking junipers, I mean for any species, but especially junipers, you get twist and rotation, bam, jump on it and utilize that as a very special feature. Now, I wouldn't say that that overrides best base and line, but when we look at this tree, we have best base, we have best line up through here, right? We even get a better line moving up through this canopy, dropping down and circling back right here. The key to this, this branch right here, this is another trunk. This is another tree entirely. This is another trunk, this is another tree, and then bam, right here, watch this. Come on back. Come on back and allow these two pieces to engage with each other and allow them to work together. Now, you could drop a branch off this side, but if you do so, drop it down. Drop it down. Keep that side super narrow. Play on that character as much as you can. Whatever we do, compress here because we are pushing here. Slender trunk, great base. Suddenly this tree just boom comes to life. This is a really fantastic piece of material. We locked in on that feature. It worked objectively with the best base in the line. We get that defining branch. We adjust the continuation of the line base to tip to define that apex. Fantastic uh, potential for this tree. I like the container too. I like the container. Interesting shape. I think it's a great form to complement. I think the size is on point. Really nice uh, setup for a composition that could be really dramatic and quite powerful. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got here for tree number three. This looks to me like a mugo pine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a mugo pine. Almost like a uh, clump style. Yeah, this is great, isn't it? This is great. This is great, yeah, I love this. I love this uh, nuance uh, of, of trees like this. I'm noticing, right, and as you look at every angle, you always want to be aware. Look at the movement that we're getting through here. Look at the movement, look at the movement, because this is, these are the pieces that we key into. Now, I'm not proposing we look at it this way because these disappear to the backside of the tree and you just put this rigid trunk front and center. Okay, but I'm recognizing that there's movement. I want to see that movement. I feel like this, this image right here is, is really, when we start to look from the top down, I feel like that image was looking in from over here. And I notice what happens when we look in from somewhere here. We push this to the back. We bring this to the front. We don't look at this. You know, if we think about looking at it on this plane, this depth that we get here takes it off the two dimension, but do we get this loop and this movement? Do we get this arc and this movement? Those are the pieces that I really want to bring home. Uh, when we start to talk about the best possible design. And that's where we start to see it from this position. Now, I think, okay, take it with a grain of salt because I'm not looking in person. I think I want to see even more here. This does feel to be a little two-dimensional, almost as if this and this are on the same plane. I want to see it over here. I want to push that piece to the back and I want to get that piece of movement right there because I feel like that movement is strong. Now, I want to use this as a little bit of a threshold, I want to use this as a threshold because I don't want to lose these pieces. These now give value here. So if we sacrifice those pieces to get more movement in the trunk on the right, might not be a positive thing to do. That's where you get to play with that positioning and it's going to be very, very nuanced, okay? But when we're looking at this, how do we engage a clump style tree? Obviously, this trunk with so much foliage getting thicker, this is relatively thin, that's okay, we can tell that story, but just recognize these are pieces that are kind of spoiling to a degree the hierarchy. I think we really need to focus, and let me just get back to, yeah, I see that movement there. Okay, I think we really need to focus on this, on compressing this side here. Okay, we've got this piece here, 
I, I think you have this pad. I think this is your defining branch. I think we're moving in this direction, right? I think that informs this piece to be coming out. I think that informs this piece in the back rear. We want to see that depth right here, right? I love these living pieces. If they are still alive, these small pieces have got to be valued and utilized, right? Uh, but I think that means we need to reduce heavily on this side of the composition and open up that space in the middle here for all of those smaller pieces in the rear portion of the tree, which means this suddenly has a small apical region here, small sort of branching system here, and then back in these spaces along the margins of that trunk, this is where I wanna see a branch from one of these slender trunks right here. I wanna see that depth, I wanna earn that degree of front to back distance in the aesthetic of the tree. Okay, over here, we've got this piece. This is just brilliant. I think you keep this piece up. I think you keep this piece up so that you don't impact and you show the relationship of this trunk in response to these pieces and all of those working together in that singular system of the connected root or the raft style design. The question I have is, if you're dropping this down so low, we wanna show that alpine environment. Can we create, is there foliage here? I can't really tell if there is apex here. If there's not, then you gotta keep this. You gotta keep it this high and really kind of work with trying as much as you can to get some elongation and development out in that region. Works with that branch, continues to sort of show the elements that create this movement, that create this flow. I think that's where your best design is. Very similar piece that we did on a, on a mini stream on a Colorado blue spruce ancient forest in a Jan Kulik crescent. I feel like that's one of the strongest pieces Mirai did because it's so representative of an ancient forest. It feels like you have a similar opportunity to tap into a real significant degree of naturalness in your design, all right? Tree number four, and this is looking, what do we have here? We have a, a, a Scots pine that has yet to, I think Scots, or maybe, hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna assume this is a Scots pine that has yet to like back bud and really tighten up, maybe, maybe recovering from collection, I don't know. If, it, if it's not a Scots pine, I'm gonna talk strictly about design, so take it with a grain of salt, and I apologize if I made a mistake. Okay, image number, oh, image number two now. Image number two, okay, a little bit of a weaker base. This is gonna inform, and again, you know, calling a spade a spade, recognizing, hey, the base isn't super radically strong, and especially here. Notice the lack. How badly do you want a big, rugged piece of Nabari here because this tree just comes out? And this has very stocky branching, which is to say, and I'm almost wondering if this isn't a Mugo pine uh, and not a Scots pine, but it does feel like it has a field-grown characteristic to a degree. Um, this branch right here just absolutely sets the tone for everything. This piece right here, and I think trying to get, and maybe even coming back up if you wanted to, and padding that out, I think you use this piece up and kind of carry that into here if we get, and when we get, not if, when we get buds in the interior, having some of this sort of apical insinuation. Here's where I think, though, we really have to be careful, okay? I don't think we can have counters here, which removing these counters, these are not quality branches, we do not want to create the same distance here as we're creating here, which is to say, okay, we're going to get rid of these pieces on this side. We're saying, listen, I, I, I think we could use this, but I would almost rather use this towards the back as this kind of a pad, right? Showing that wind. Where I think, where I think this design really starts to work is this upper branch here, look at this rhythm in this upper branch, bam, amazing, and then this branch turning back here, okay? Turning back here, coming back, and then boom, give me that flow again. This little return that pulls the apex back and then pushes it forward is the move in the design that compensates for this lack of base, okay? The fact that we have this piece here and the fact that the apex mm, gives a return and then back that allows us to maintain balance. If we just push the apex all the way over here, that is too far, that's too much mass being pushed too far away to the left of the tree without a base to stabilize it. That's your moment right there. That is your moment right there, okay? Now I think this piece could potentially be a beautiful gin that could accentuate the ruggedness of this piece, show this windblown effect and start to create the nuance as we develop back budding, interior growth, et cetera. Okay, that's assuming that these, all this foliage up here is actually occurring from these pieces and not from this central branch. I would consider that potentially as a gin. If not, 
then we may have to do a big bend to get this big piece back and then return here. Still, it all works the same because this upper branch gives us that length. We're shortening on this side, compressing here, elongating here. I think this is a really, really magnificent piece of material to explore design with, okay? All right, tree number five, the oak, Quercus. I love, I love, and I'm not sure what type of, oh, goodness gracious me, look at that. Okay, image number one, now notice, and I'm just gonna be very uh, sort of stream of conscious, boom, wiggle, boom, wiggle, straight, okay? But here's the big one, apex directly over the base. Anytime you want to generate interest in design, take the apex off the center of base. Take it off the center of base. That is how you start to increase the interest. Already image number two, now this is looking from the side. I do see a better base, I see a better base, right? But I see that apex off center and I'm saying, yes, we're headed in the right direction and now we get to image number three, which I feel like, you know, here's looking at image number four, there's potential here, the base is beautiful, we've got a little bit of odd inverse taper. This is lyrical. This is magic right here in image number three, okay? Because now the apex is off of the base, you get this incredible transition. Oh my goodness, notice this quality of movement here, bam. Now this is a little bit challenging here. This is a little bit challenging. I do feel like it's got just enough distance uh, that it works, right? I feel like it's ju got just enough distance that it works. I would really like to use this transition of taper but start to get some branching into these areas and really look to shorten that big structural piece, right? Whether that's possible or not, you will know. But if you start to think about starting your ramification on your oak from this section and really starting to build that apical region, these pieces here coming out, up, out, up, Right, really how you merit this branch right here. Oh my goodness gracious, I love that. We're gonna be ramifying this out in here, ramifying this out in here, okay? And think about, but this is actually, and I think going down with this is a mistake. I think you wanna come up with this right here. And I think you want this piece right here to be your defining branch that you're gonna start to ramify out and really maximize strength here. Strength on the left side, boom, push to the right, okay? We won't overly elongate this. We'll keep this really nice and short and compact. We're using this as our defining branch. Another piece here might hop up in the back, backside, backside depth, right in here, keep it nice and short. This is where you want your length, right in that piece that we're gonna to raise to that location. And I think this is the best tree that you can make with this material. This is a fantastic Quercus. Uh, I, would, I would really, really enjoy having this piece uh, myself. Okay, tree number six, H. Looks like a Shimpaku Juniper to the best of my ability to tell. Maybe a highly compacted Sabina, but I, I'm thinking most likely Shimpaku. Yeah, and then I'm gonna focus on image number three and image number uh, five because this gives us the greatest amount of visibility of the material. Now, when I look between the two, it seems to me that there's something going on with live and dead here. Seems like we have something going on here, but obviously the challenge in this are these lateral lines to the rim of this container. We just have this straight up parallel nature to things that is very, very challenging to work with, okay? Now, I would even say you know, it's clear based on seeing the roots here, we kind of took it to the maximum of tipping it to the left. What happens if we come back and we tip back to the right and we actually have, we actually have this piece coming up? Because once it comes up, then you take these pieces and you drop these pieces back down, right? And this piece right here can drop back and have some depth in here. Now, when you drop that down, this branch right here, now that starts to originate here, and that's, that's, a, that's an apical region right there, and we've got this sort of tip that's gonna be all the way down here, maybe we have some intermediate pieces here, maybe we have when we drop this back and over, have some pads in here that occupy that negative space. Okay, what this allows you to do now is it allows you to define your line base to tip here, which means I'm gonna take this over into here, I'm gonna start to work to, this branch right here can drop to the back, this piece right here can come around to the front. We can start to build out this type of a vibe where you now have the apical region down here. Your apex is here. You've got kind of this billowy nature to this piece over here, but we're gonna shrink down the size of that canopy. We're gonna shrink this down 
We're gonna reduce it. It's gonna increase the power visually of that trunk base. And now we start to see some real magic happen. I think that is your better option. And let me just finish out sort of this container. I like the container you have it in. I think it's quite stunning. Uh, the overall design I think is very, very stunning. And let me just do this so that you can better see. I know it's a little bit visually polluted with everything, but this, this does tend to kind of help. Okay, now we can kind of see the lines of the trunk. We can see the canopy. I think that's where your best use of this material is gonna come from, is actually taking that and raising it up. We can't go down anymore, right? So now we go up a little bit and then we drop these pieces down and that's where the interest exists. There's a juniper on the gallery. Uh, it's a small Sierra juniper in a round cascading pot, very similar. And it has a branch that's very rigid and then I dropped everything down. You can see that, see if it appeals to you. It's a good visual reference for what you could do with this, okay? All right, tree number seven, 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 Scott's Pine Deluxe. This looks like the bark that comes from almost the, um, looks like the bark from the French uh, Sylvestris. Um, but also I know you have really wonderful, uh, or I think you have really wonderful Sylvestris in Germany as well. Wow, as I go through this, yes, I see the arcs. Very, very characteristic. Very characteristic. Anytime we start to look at this line, right, this, this, this circular line, automatically I'm saying I need to rotate because I don't want to look at this. I can look at this, right? I can decrease that arc. I don't want that full circle. Boom. So I'm already thinking about rotating. I go to image number two. I see the backside of that arc. Ah, image number three. Here we are, right? Boom, boom. That's where we just went. We saw the arc foreshorten that. That's what we see up in the upper. And let me see the other side. Okay, this side feels a little bit more uh, domesticated. It does. This side does have the deadwood, which we need to understand. Okay, it does have the deadwood here, but notice the smooth, sinuous curve, and then take me on back to that image number three. This is where the magic of this tree exists. Good base here. Great. Look at this. Boom, boom. Movement right there. Right off the bat, an, uh, amazing movement through here. Great bark. Now, I know this goes to the back. That means your first move on one of these pieces has to come to the front. Now we look at the trunk and we say, is this feminine or is this masculine? Is it slender or is it thick? It's in the middle. It's in the middle, okay? So if it were feminine, if it were slender, we would continue this line towards the front and upwards, right? We would draw that design out, okay? If it were masculine, we would smash it all the way down, okay? And we would probably, if it was masculine, want to shorten from this piece right here and create this type of a tree, okay? But it's not. It's not. It's kind of a combination of those two. And that's where I start to look at this and I start to think, okay, then this piece can exist and start to create an apex right in here where we add a lot of interest to the movement when we pull that forward, right? If I just go like this, that's another one of those circular bends. But if I pull that forward towards me, notice how that becomes a sharp bend right there. That's a sharp angle, okay? Pull that branch back towards you and then drop it down. When we get that undulation, that's what, what this move is right here. Nice and tight because I've pulled it arc forward, right? Now I get that apex and let me just take that. There we go. Now I get that apex out here, okay? I've got these branches and look at all the branches you have to work with here. I'm gonna be pushing out a branch up here that's giving me some direction because I've got this piece. This is where I want you to utilize this same thematic coming down coming back up, coming back down with one of these two, maybe this one, and then this piece right here, bam, coming up, forming here, forming here. Maybe we shorten this, and let me just come back here. I'm gonna shorten this piece. Okay, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take that out, I, even though we have some. Okay, I'm gonna take that out because I, I see where this now needs the space. Okay, boom, boom. This needs the space for this to exist here and this to exist here. I think you lose this really kind of shaggy guy. I think you value this piece right here to give you smaller branches in the back, in the depth of the tree. But you have this big long draw on the base on the left side, man, use it. Embrace this move right here, push to the right side and really maximize sort of this middle ground. We didn't overly compress, we didn't overly elongate. We did that intermediate move that coincides with the feeling of the trunk. It's got some curve, it's got some angle, it's not thick, it's not thin, it's in between. This is the happy, happy medium that maximizes, I think, what the material is giving you. And I think this could be just an absolutely gangbusters piece. I like what you're, I like what you're bringing to the table.
Yeah, this feels like a very tight, compact Sylvestris. What a stunning, either that or a white pine, but feels like a Sylvestris from every way, shape, and form. This is a very, very mature tree. This is a very, very special tree. Um, I want to be very careful about the advice I give about this tree because when you, and this is really part of, the, of understanding the depth of the bonsai practice, when you approach a very old established tree that's been a bonsai for a long time and it's showing this kind of maturity, you have got to be absolutely understanding of the initial creator and artist's intentions if you offer any perspective of how to change it. And I can't see enough of the tree to know if what I'm saying is exactly what I believe or not. So please uh, understand that I am just basing it on the very limited amount that I can see. I cannot see structural flaws in the canopy. I cannot see changes of direction in the trunk. I see a very dense piece that offers a lot of potential and has been handled really well. But as I surf through the pictures, I gotta tell you, image number one, two, three, four, image number five here, J5, this, this feels like, and I understand the apex is probably leaning away from us, but the way that the stone and the, these roots and this base, but this movement, the way that, and I'm just dreaming here as I catch this little bit here, I see this as seemingly having more of a change in direction. Notice the apex is now swinging off of the center of the base. I wanna take you back to image number, let's see. Let me, let me see here. Yes, image number four appears to be the originally selected front, and I see the apex almost directly centered. And again, I love the way the stone presents here. I think this is amazing. I think it's amazing. But when you give me image number five, this is where I really see some potential taking place. So let me just kind of work through. I mean, there's obvious, obvious quality. Image number seven, Opposite side of image number five, you see that quality once again. I don't see the same interest though as I see here, okay? And this is where I want to kind of focus because this piece, I don't know if this piece comes from here or if this piece comes from here. This seems to be a very important piece of the tree, right? And when I start to look at this, bringing the apex and keeping this apex moving to the right, right? And let me just shorten that up just a little bit keeping the apex moving to the right, having some counter branches, not fully abandoning tradition, but definitely pushing in here, definitely pushing in here and really trying to engage and push out. And I think instead of trying to push out in the traditional methodology of this lower piece, I think you do create that, that distance, but I think you also have a push out in this upper portion where you go out. When you come back in here, I'm hoping there's a depth branch in the back of the tree, and I know that there's a lot of branches, that we go out, we push in, we go back out again, and that movement in the silhouette, that is what gains you a lot of quality on a very mature tree. Notice this big sort of external dome here, and suddenly with the removal of some foreground branches, we leave this piece in the back, we go out, we come back in, we go back out in our tree, gives you this kind of an impression. This big complete crown, very foreground dominant, we get depth in our design when we start to pull this piece out and look at this piece in the back, right? And that's really where I see this potentially having some opportunity to take that next step. But again, I want to be very clear. When a tree is here, we need to be very considered, we need to be very calculated, and we need to be very respectful because it's taken a long time to get here. The moves we make absolutely need to improve in a grand way the quality of this tree, but the moves that I'm suggesting will add another degree of age to the design and enhance the quality of this piece. I have no doubt about it. All right, what do we got here? We've got a, ooh, okay, 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 okay. Looks like a Sylvestris, possibly a Mugo, Mugo, maybe a Mugo, hmm, it's tough with the needle. Uh, I'm gonna say Mugo uh, as opposed to Sylvestris just based on the characteristics. If it's a Sylvestris, again, I apologize. I see the buds, they, they, it's a little bit tough, okay? And I'm gonna look at this side just from the simple perspective. I get the deadwood here. Now the deadwood is very, very horizontal. And again, these lines, don't, don't deny those lines and their significance. Here's the thing, if I tilt the tree up, I'm gonna get closer and closer to horizontal here, closer and closer to vertical here, right? So there is a threshold and I'm gonna say where it's at right now may be the very best that this can be. Okay, now there's a thought process. What if I taper this deadwood down 
and I could further, I could further sort of drop this a little bit and make, I don't know what kind of roots we have here, if those could be sort of stable enough to hold the tree, and we start to look at a little bit more, oop, that's way too uh, extreme. We start to look a little bit more sort of at this type of an angle. I don't know if that's possible. Anyways, if it is, great. Here's what I wanna focus on. This turn, this turn, and what we have happening here. This is magic, this is magic. Now this magic continues through here, but the magic doesn't continue through here, at least not from this perspective. There may be lines in there that we can pull on and manipulate, but you have a very big, very big opportunity in the canopy here, and you have the, uh, I think, what I would consider a trunk that needs to hold a smaller mass, right? So whether we gin this piece right here or whether we bend this piece down or up, we definitely need to reduce the overall size of this canopy. I support ginning this because I think your transition here is really interesting and I think you have great movement through these pieces to be working on and I wanna push this piece. I wanna push this piece to the right as much as I can. You have all of this interest here and these roots seem to suggest that we've got a clinging to that uh, environment. Right, you've got these branches in here. This deadwood is fantastic. Bring these pieces forward and start to really build out sort of this type of a vibe in terms of this. Doesn't have to be super dramatic and rugged, right? It, it can just be really pleasant in this sort of undulating flow in this tree, just kind of propped up, sitting out on the end of this elongated base. There's enough interest, there's enough movement. We don't need to make this tight, compact thing. Really let it kind of sit out there. Let it be proud in that space. I think that maximizes this material and uses the design to tap into a character that, uh, that might enhance the overall impression a viewer would get from this tree. But a really fun little piece here to get to play with that, uh, that line and the quality of that line. Okay, what do we got here? No, this is the, this is the same tree. This is the same tree. Aha, aha, yep, this is the same tree as the previous one, and now I see so much more. Let me see if I believe what I said last time. It does feel like ginning it is not going to be, now having this information, does feel like ginning it is not going to be the best case. Now, we were looking at it previously here, uh, but I definitely do see the necessity to bring this piece back and then when we bring this piece back, I'm gonna use this and this return, boom, boom, okay? And I'm gonna to start to look at this type of presentation of the foyer mass, right? I like this piece right here, but I need to bring this piece out before I drop again and really kick out something here and something here to maximize that movement. You have the stability here. I still like that presentation, but that bottom piece is now going to, it's gonna dive on us. And I think that's going to give you the kind of design expanse that's really gonna add. Uh, in the future, that lowest piece, you might choose to gin that and work in compatibility with the deadwood that already exists. That is a, a decision that you can make in the future, but what an interesting piece. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna focus on image number one, and I wanna come back to image number one and image number one, two, three, four, five. Okay, because as we see in these details of the deadwood here, that one right there, there's movement through this portion of the tree. There is definitely sort of a wobble through this that we wanna take advantage of when we look from here. And when I look at image number five, this is where I see a significant degree of quality in the movement through that right there, right? And so I know that there's movement on the other side through here with Deadwood. I see this movement here. And I come back to image number one, and I start to think, okay, what if we go ahead and we reorient this tree? Same pot. I, I mean, I like the pot, but reorient this tree so that we have something like this. And this piece comes up. And then we know if we start to look at it from over here, we get this wobble through here. And we also know that we have this beautiful line there. I want that beautiful line and I wanna pull that beautiful line back to this tree. And here's why. Because now that we've done this and I wanna drop, as I pull this back, you have a good strong base right here. 
I don't want the apex to look back on this trunk, okay? That's the last thing I wanna do. I think that would be very, very uninteresting. And let me get rid of, let me get rid of that, okay? So we come here, boom, okay? I wanna pull this back here. Let me just, and I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna tighten it from right here, right here. Okay, I wanna pull this back and then I wanna push this out again. And I want my apex moving out in that direction. And I want my apex moving out in that direction because I wanna drop these pieces right off of the corner here and I want these to be super steep. I want them to hang down and I want my pads to be out here, okay? And I wanna go out into this area. I wanna come back into hopefully a depth branch back in the back here, right? And then I wanna move back out with that cascading branch. Very slender, very delicate piece here, right? And so I don't want to push super far out instead of having it all the way out there, I'm just gonna drop it down. I'm gonna pull that weight back and I'm gonna take advantage of that slender, elegant trunk. Charming, charming little pine. I love it, really, really beautiful, okay? And last but not least, Looks like we're talking about, this looks like a Miyajima perhaps, or an imported pine, white Japanese white pine. Um, and a rather interesting, scale-wise, quite small, quite dainty, and it's very, very odd to see these as small, dainty trees. I like, I like image number one, I like image number two. Image number two, the root system has a little bit more of an aggressive vibe. Image number one, it's a little bit two-dimensional. What else do we have here? It seems to me, when I look at image number three, and let me see, yep, Im image number three, there's something over here. There's something over here. And when I say over here, I'm saying some, somewhere over here, not directly behind, not directly on the side, somewhere right here, where that stability of that crossing with this piece right here and this root right here is going to pull. And let me just come back to this. Okay, if I'm looking at image number two, because image number one has such a two-dimensional base, image number two has some merit, and I see the dimension of this over here. If I start looking here, I close down this wide. Again, I go wide here, I start to look here. We close that down. Now that becomes acute. That becomes acute. Now it pushes the smaller trunk to the foreground. That's great. That's great. There's nothing wrong with that, to push the, the smaller trunk to the foreground. We start to see a more acute vibe. Okay, and here's the thing. This trunk right here is moving in this direction and the apex is moving. This trunk right here is moving in this direction and that is moving there. And when you look at this, it is a symmetrical tree from the distance that we have from that center line of the entire thing. We need to create asymmetry. We need to create asymmetry in this tree, okay? So when I start to look, the thing that kind of compels me is this move here and this branch coming down into here, right? And I think that branch could have even another drop, have, have a layer, this can be in a, a, a Miyajima or maybe a Nasu pine. It doesn't look grafted. It might be grafted, doesn't look grafted, just looks old. Feels like this might be more of like a, a, a Fukushima, maybe even a Shikoku pine, uh, but, but maybe not the Miyajima that I originally thought. Uh, and the needles aren't quite that bluish color, although they do have a hint. So anyways, I'm, I'm in the middle of what this is. Okay, but I think this apex, right here, has a really beautiful ability to work here. So that means that this piece, this piece needs to compress into here, and we really wanna bring this piece and the depth branches. See this branch right here? I'm gonna swing that into this area and have that back behind in the rear of the tree, and I'm gonna be thinking, do I want this piece here, or do I create a gin right there and have these smaller branches drop down and be much shorter? tighter pads on that side, right? I think that pushes this tree in this direction, boom, boom, and I think that's your mojo that maximizes this piece of material. We take this, we come to here and narrow, and maybe right in there, we gain some interest in the base, and then we push to that harmonious side of the design, and I think you have something really special. That is probably, right? Take everything that I say in design with a grain of salt, because I'm looking at two-dimensional images and you're dealing with the three-dimensional tree, but hopefully that gives you some ideas, right? Just to care, catalyze some ideas, get you started in the design direction. Fantastic pieces of material. Truly a pleasure to get to just sort of freely 
without dialogue, just express opinions about the material and the design opportunities that maximize the objective analysis of the characters of the tree. I have a good base, I push away from it. I have a thick trunk, I compress. I have a thin trunk, I elongate, I narrow, right? All of these things just constantly applying the ways that we utilize the character of the material to maximize that material. This is the best, in my mind, objective way to maximize each tree that we handle and passes through our turntable. Thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I look forward to doing more of this and we hope to see you all on Mariah Live uh, furthering our bonsai knowledge. We'll keep working hard. All right, take care. Mwah!